Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you this morning. Keith Chegwin, how are you? Hey, good morning. Listen, can I apologise on behalf of the nation? You've had one of the most unedifying Januaries in history. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Do you know what? I, I'll tell you now. Um, looking back at it, because, you know, just been out of the house for a few days, uh, I actually secretly enjoyed it because I've always been a fan of Big Brother. And I knew exactly why I was going in there, just to experience Big Brother. And it, I tell you now, it did not disappoint. <laughs> I know. You showed such decorum, and in a house that was probably the most vile we've ever seen. I mean, it really exposed how vulnerable and vile show business can be. And it's sad, actually. Yeah, well, it's a clash of personalities, isn't it? And I think, you know, uh, for the viewers, I mean... I suppose they got the mix right because yeah. that's what people want to watch. It was compelling, but it was also infuriating at times. For you, on a scale of one to ten, could you get away from it? Were you able to escape, or was it impossible? No, it's totally impossible. You can't do that. I mean, that's the magic of Big Brother. Really, it's a, a very closed environment. Um, you know, and it also makes you feel incredibly vulnerable. You know, from literally uh, having to do your own washing because there's no washing machine, you're having to uh, try and iron things with your hands. Um, <laughs> you know, the, 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 uh, trying to get a uh, bleach or any sort of cleaning fluid is ridiculous. Uh, you, there's no uh, locks on the toilets, uh, so you feel anybody could walk in at any moment. You have to change in front of everybody, uh, and then they throw all the challenges and the tasks at you, and then you've got the clash of personalities. Um, yeah. My God, it was rough. <laughs> Just on a personal level, I don't even show my arms in public. I mean, are you in fear that they're going to catch a, a picture of your private parts and stick it across the nation on Channel 5? On that side of things, uh, you know, it, it's up to you, really. I mean, there were uh, a couple of other girls in there that were dying to show their bits. And I just, <laughs> yeah, honestly, I can't tell you. I went into the bathroom one day and they chased after me, yeah. uh, you know, semi-naked, and I didn't enjoy that. Uh, one of the girls jumped into the pool and her hey, uh, bra snapped. What a coincidence. Uh, she was going, oh, I hope nobody <laughs> yeah. saw that. Well, hang on, you got 80 cameras, love. <laughs> you know, they're going to catch everything they can. But, um, I mean, I'm okay with television and, you know, the way sound and things work, but it got me every time. But, no, you know, the shower, I mean, there's a closed door. The toilets, there's a closed door. Uh, if you want to change in the toilet, you can. If there's privacy in the shower. And if people do catch you, then it's your own bloody fault. Yeah. But, no. uh, but it's like everything, isn't it? I mean, you know, um, you, I mean, you, you get... So, it's so clever. I can't tell you, Alex, that even me working in television, I can't see where the other cameras are. Mm. There's nowhere to hide. And there's, you know, it's rec everything's recorded on yeah. isolated things. So, you know, you've only got yourself to blame if something goes wrong or I you know. open your mouth and say the wrong words. It's not just me. This was the longest series ever, wasn't it? It's never oh, been yeah, this long I mean, before. This was like four weeks and three days. Right. Um, so, you know, it was no mean feat. I mean, two weeks down the line, I thought, oh, my God, I've got another bloody two weeks to do. Well, this is no lie. I left for holiday for Miami on, I think, the Tuesday, and you'd started. And when I came back three weeks later, you were still on. I couldn't believe it. I know, don't. Extraordinary. Uh, I mean, it was a long stint. It really, and the days are incredibly long. Yeah. Uh, because there's a lot of downtime in the house, you know, so you might have a challenge every other day. Yeah. Uh, but the rest of the time, you'll have to get on with your own devices. And Big Brother's very clever. It just throws things at you, like, you know, yeah. give Perez a crown and a cape. And that's all they do. They only yes. give him a crown and a cape. Yeah. He came to the day. And, oh, my God, does he take off. <laughs> now, listen, how long have we got? Because I've got seven million questions for you, and I want to talk about your career because it's extraordinary. I mean, you really started as an actor, and you wanted to be an actor, didn't you? Yeah, it was funny. I actually started long before that because I, when I was 10, I was singing in the clubs in Liverpool and, you know, uh, desperate to be a Des O'Connor. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> To cut an incredibly long story short, I was discovered, went onto a television show, and then um, June Collins, which is Phil Collins' mother, said, we'd like to go to stage school in London. And I did. And when I was at stage school, I did things like, you know, a show called Maine with a lady called Ginger Rogers, and made mm -hmm. seven films with Peter Sellers, worked in, you know, things like Open All Hours with uh, Ronnie Barker, The Live of Theirs, Black Beauty, <laughs> everything you could think of. And, and even I'm proper theatre like Macbeth. I mean, really good yeah, stuff. Yeah, I know. Plansky's Macbeth plays Slayer. 
Incredible. And, yeah, it's quite odd because people keep uh, writing to me saying, oh, did I see you in a Children's Film Foundation film? Did I see you in this? Did I see you in that? So there is a past there. Yeah. And then um, I basically had no work on, wrote to the BBC suggesting a kids' show uh, with me interviewing people, and they wrote back so they didn't like the idea, but then, could I pop in? <laughs> and so I did, and then I ended up working on a program called Swap Shop, which is like a, uh, a Saturday morning program for kids. And that's when my career took off at 17, really. You know, people, well, not took off, but <laughs> people got to know me. <laughs> is it fun being you, though? I mean, this, for example, is completely normal to you. You did four years on Radio 1, you were at Radio City, you've been an actor, you've been a comedian, oh, yeah. you've been an entertainer. There aren't many people who master the various areas of show business that you have. It's a real achievement. Oh, it's, I don't know, it's just luck, really, isn't it? You know, I've been very lucky in my uh, life. I mean, there's some bad bits, but that's fine. Uh, but yes, I mean, luck has always been on my side. And the thing is, I've never played anything else but myself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so is that it's, tough though because you're revealing a lot of yourself I think you were the most real in there you were certainly the most vulnerable that we genuinely realised was the most affected by their shenanigans is it tough because you're a sensitive man aren't you uh, yeah I suppose I am in a way you know when you when I was in the house I mean you know I was nominated uh, by five housemates which is really unusual and that did affect me a lot of people said oh you went down and you know the quiet well it was because yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden there was I cooking cleaning, looking after them, uh, you know, did, hopefully didn't upset anybody because I don't like to do that anyway. And then all of a sudden five people say they want you out. Yeah. And then the second time they want you out again. I'm thinking, whoa, what have I done wrong? Well, they all kept saying it's a game, but when you're in it, it's reality, isn't it? Oh, it is very much so, you know. And also they didn't appreciate is that, um, and this sounds really odd, Alex, is that... Um, I get affected by other people. So yeah. there were, out of the house, there's about 10 professionals in there that are used to being booed in front of an audience, <clears throat> used to coping with crowds or what have you, and television. And there's a few people in there who weren't. And there was one lovely lady called uh, Alexis, um, Alicia, sorry, um, who was not used to that television exposure, and she went out and she was booed. Yeah. There was another girl called Chloe who was in there and was being booed. That really affected me because yeah. I, you can't um, you can't sort of like gear them up for what to expect when they go out. So I got quite upset by it mm. uh, because I thought, oh my God, they're just easy, normal people <coughs> who the crowd at Big Brother that night just decided to boo, and it did affect me really because I felt sorry for them, you know. There was one thing that happened in the house that I want to talk to you about that I thought was unfair. I like Ken Morley very much. I think, like you, he's a genuine man. He's from a different generation. In a way, I mean, I can understand why he was thrown out. I know his family uh, have written in the paper saying they're really sad about what had happened, what he'd said and what he'd done. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I know what you're trying to say, but even from a different generation, I don't think it's excusable, really, in this day and age. I'm not talking about the race stuff, but what I'm talking about is when he said that she'd nice bottoms or whatever he said. Last night I was watching MTV and they'd got a programme on with young people and three times in the programme, oh, she's got great tits, she's got a great ass, oh, no. and it's perfectly acceptable. All I'm saying is now that since Savile, there's this sort of thing that anybody over 30 who makes a comment about a woman is immediately either a paedophile rape or sexist. I think yeah. we've got to be a bit careful after that. Did it make you paranoid about every word you said? Because it's so easily taken out of context. No, not really, because uh, I, that never comes into my head. Right. Uh, in fact, I just find it the opposite way around. They were chasing me, you know, semi-naked out of the bathroom. Well, it's, it's I, your allure. That's what it is, Keith. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't like that. And then they did it again, and I thought, no, please don't do it, because I'm not that sort of person, you know. Right. And there was people in the bedroom, you know, taking their clothes off and things, ladies. And, you know, I didn't like that either, because I've never liked that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even in Panto, I shut my bloody door and I don't let people in. <laughs> you know. Which is ironic for a man who, um, one of your most famous bits in your career is being naked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very easy to say that I'm a private person, but yeah, you're right. I mean, but it was Channel 5, it was a long time ago, and uh, I just thought I'd get more criticism for keeping me clothed no, on. I know. And in terms of the, the room itself and sleeping with other people, I can't stand noise. I'm like you. I'm very oh, clinical. God. How was that? Is that really it's difficult? Dreadful. I mean, I, I, I didn't do that. I mean, all the celebrities race for the beds, and I thought, well, I'll just take what's left over because I couldn't be bothered with the competition uh, to get a single bed. But I ended up sharing with Kavanagh. 
And uh, because, because of his uh, drinking, he was all over the bloody place. Yeah. He slapped me twice in the face and then kicked me up the backside. Wow. And I got out of bed and stepped on a five-foot chaise long. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I have to say, of all the people in there, I think he's the most vulnerable. Kate is yeah. just offensive. He, I think, is quite vulnerable as a human being. Yes, I think you're right, actually. And I think he has a few issues maybe with drinking too much. And uh, he did tell me where to go one night in yeah. a certain terms. Wasn't nice. Yeah, well, the thing was is that, um, and I suppose in a way you could semi blame me because I was looking after him and that was the wrong thing to do because I saw him drinking to excess. Um, you know, and I never told him to stop. No. Um, but I did so, I mean, I tried to, he tried one night to leave the house. And he was in a drunken stupor, and I actually said to him, I said, look, you've got a career. Is this really what you want to be doing? You don't want to leave the house, really, do you? And eventually I managed him to, you know, uh, not go upstairs and uh, leave uh, the big brother house. Mm. But um, on a few occasions, he did have a go at me. But I think maybe he had a go at me because, I don't know, you know, because I had trouble with alcohol, 22 years sober, and he was thinking, oh, God, he's the shining yeah. light that's trying to be my saviour. Yeah. Well, it wasn't, because eventually I did leave him. Uh, because I think there comes a point, even with somebody who's so drunk, you really have to be responsible for your own actions. Yeah. I can't help you, mate. <laughs> Absolutely. I was listening to Nadia interviewed last week, and it seems to me they could make another month of programmes out of the stuff they didn't show. Oh, I'll tell you now, uh, I, don't, I hate pulling that card. Uh, you know, oh, well, what you didn't see was... Well, actually, you know, what you saw was probably, you know, pretty damn good, and that's what people want to see. Yeah. But, yes, you could you could make another series out of the, uh, the, the fun side of things and the other side of things that you didn't see. You know all that stuff about we're going to be friends when we leave the house? Do you think you will be friends with anybody in a yeah, month's there's, time? There's a couple, but that's it. <clears throat> uh, Nadia, who... Uh, now I have to, now, A lot of people might knock me for this, but I do have to admire Nadia because... Uh, I think people did see um, Katie Hopkins and others saying we've got to exclude uh, Perez. Yeah. And from that day onwards, uh, I remember Nadia said to me, we can't exclude him, that's really unfair. And I didn't exclude Perez, he was just an A1 nutter. Yeah. Um, and Nadia didn't, and she took him under her wing. And when she did that, she knew that she was out of the Big Brother house, that she would have, she, she would not, she'd stop yeah. at her chances. And you have, that's admirable, really, to look after somebody, you know, not because of, uh, I mean, she even said he was an A1 nutter too. Yeah. Uh, but just to, uh, not exclude him from things that, uh, she, you know, she, she really was a, a, a strength. So I keep in touch with Nadia. And also, the person I never thought I would uh, get to know and really love and like so well, Katie Price. Yeah. We've been emailing each other since we've been out of the house. It's been fantastic. How's she doing? Because, I mean, she's flown off to get herself sorted, isn't she? Yeah, she went over to Brussels uh, to have an operation. So uh, she uh, seems to be hopefully on the mend. Um, but, you know, she, she had a tough time in the house because people were chatting behind her back. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, they were really very cruel. I mean, there was one day, you know, uh, I mean, I knew she was suffering, so I, you know, was going to get her painkillers and her stuff. And her. Uh, she was on a course of antibiotics, thank you. Right. Uh, but on the last two days, uh, we couldn't find, she couldn't find her antibiotics. And I told her to stay in bed and stay still because she was hopefully, you know, yeah. uh, she wasn't uh, too good. And uh, I always remember Katie Hopkins turning around to me and saying, oh, well, you know, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm looking for a medication. So at uh, her age, she should be responsible for her own, her own meds, not you. Mm. So I was furious. Do you I think Hopkins fine. is just truly vile or she's a great actress? I think she's truly cruel. I really right. do. I thought, on the first few days I was there, I thought, how nice. But I didn't realise that that... <laughs> was her challenge. Uh, Big see. Brother gave her a task, and that yeah. was to be nice for people for the first few days. But you know you're losing in life if you have to be challenged just to be human and nice, <laughs> isn't it? It's sad. <clears throat> it really is sad. <clears throat> but what she would do, she'd pick on the weakest link in the house, yeah. and one of them was Alicia, and she'd, uh, I mean, she'd start to goad them, she'd coax them, she'd uh, harass them, uh, and then she'd dig the knife in, and that's what she did. I mean, Alicia is a mother, a uh, struggling mother, actually, with two kids, uh, trying to, uh, you know, set up her business and uh, she puts her kid to bed at seven o'clock at night, works all hours, you know, yeah. packing her own product and all this sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, um, um, Katie Hopkins found that, you know, she uh, couldn't spell, she had just learned to count and all this sort of thing. And she really ridiculed for that. And that's the day I thought, I don't like you. No. <laughs> 
I got to be honest, if in life your greatest achievement is feeling you're better than everyone else, you really have failed, not succeeded. It's a terrible train. Really, you know, I mean, you know, she was slagging off uh, disabled people having to go at uh, Katie Price. She was having to go at uh, Northerners. I'm thinking, what? And, you know, she she did you know she had her own private room there? Is that right? Yeah, she had her own bedroom that she slept in in the evening. She had an ensuite bathroom. She had a little table there, and uh, she used to uh, have a laptop that she could write to her national newspaper. I turned around to uh, the people in the house and said, "Hang on a minute. She can write to a national newspaper and plug herself. Why can't I go on Twitter every Thursday?" Right. So you're saying that she didn't sleep in the same room as everyone else? No. She turned around and said things like uh, her experiences, like in the bedroom, hearing people knocking on the doors at three in the morning. How the hell could she do that? Wow. She wasn't even there. So this was from the beginning. It was in the contract that she wouldn't sleep with everyone. Well, I don't know, but I mean, uh, whatever rider she had. I mean, the big big brother in our contract it says you're not allowed to sleep during the day. And I'm not joking, Alex. You'd start to nod off. Big brother would come on and say, "Big brother, who'd like to remind housemates that sleeping there during the day is not allowed." Wow. And then there was Katie Hopkins in another room during the day sleeping. So it, Patsy, do you know about Patsy Kensit? Go on. <laughs> Patsy yeah. Kemsley was having tanning, you know, um, body spray tans. <laughs> yeah, she went off and had a, I was one day she went going through the house and she went upstairs. I said, what for? I'm just having my roots done. Oh, that's funny. Callum Best ordered 60 cigarettes. <laughs> you know, and I turned around and I said, hang on, big brother, if he can order 60 cigarettes, which, you, you know, you can kill himself and a chance of ordering a coffee <laughs> oh, that's hysterical so basically what you're saying is the whole show is a facade um, and we shouldn't believe any of it no what I'm saying is is that some people put things in their writing yeah. but what you saw of Big Brother was genuine it right. really was I mean yes there was the odd sidebar like you know her sleeping in another room yeah. or you know them going off to have their odd treatments and things uh, but the rest of it is so real. I mean, how do you cope with the bitterness knowing that somebody else has got luxury and privacy and a dark room and a quiet room and you're having to sleep with everyone else? Do you just have to ignore it or did you talk well, about just, it? Yeah, I mean, I just carry on anyway, you know. But, it's uh, extraordinary. Each other own, really. I mean, they've obviously got very good agents that can negotiate that sort of deal. I guess uh, I guess that's what it's about, money and agents now, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a minor glip, uh, glitch uh, during the day, so yeah. it's not really... I mean, you know, yes, she had her own bedroom, but she was certainly in full throttle for the rest of the time. Did you see Lou swimming yesterday? There she was trying to take on Janet Street Porter. That didn't go so well. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but she certainly knows how to uh, stir the pot, I'll tell you that. Yeah. So I made the mistake about Perez, because when I came out, I actually slated him in the paper saying that he was a bit of a, you yeah. know, a whatnot. And I got that wrong, because he never had a go at me. So I feel really bad about that now. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, with Perez, is that he's an A1 nutcase. Some of his actions were totally inexcusable. Yeah. <clears throat> but I'll tell you what, he's very honest. Right. You know, through all that, I mean, his argument only was ever with um, Katie Hopkins, and that was it. But you know what I've thought in this business, right? And somebody said to me last week, I interviewed a star and they said what they like. And I said, I don't know. I've met them five times. I don't know who they are. You, I feel I know you. There are many people in this business I don't know. All I know about Perez is how could you be that rich and successful if you were that stupid? I've got to wonder whether it's some big cockamamie scheme he's come up with, which might be flawed to you and I, but maybe it's working to some agenda that we don't know about. Well, I don't know what the agenda was, because no. he, he said to me, I said, what are you here for? And he said, well, I'm here to get some fans. <laughs> he said, I wow. don't want just followers on Twitter. And I thought, wait, yeah, you're not going about it the right way. Yeah, but the cynic in me says he's been doing that 20 years. He's got a website that's got billions of followers and hits. Oh, he doesn't need any more fans. Yeah. I don't but know. the thing is, is that, um, you know, actually, on, on other, the other side of things, the other coin, is that he did make me laugh. Right. I mean, you know, I'm sitting in the bedroom with a whole load of housemates and all of a sudden this bloody big arse comes against the window yeah. and starts rubbing up and down. And, and by the way, they didn't show any of that. They didn't show him being genuinely funny. That wasn't shown yeah, at all. But, it, I mean, it did make me laugh. Right. And I, actually, I was the only one in the room because that sort of humour, I mean, on a live show, just before the live show, he's yeah. fully clothed. He yeah. then goes into the toilet, comes out in a pair of, pair of skimpy shorts. And I just burst out laughing. <laughs> and I, you know, all the housemates sort of frowned on me. I said, I'm so sorry. Yeah. That just made me laugh. What was the quality of the food like, by the way? Is it terrible or do they take care of you? No, I cooked it. Oh, good. <laughs> I know. 
Very good. Yeah, me and Nadia did most of the cooking. I mean, Nadia did it most until she left. Yeah. And then I took over from then on. But no, we, we like, I mean, what with the, um, uh, the task that we had, we managed to get a good budget each time. Yeah. So consequently, you know, we had, uh, we, we didn't get, you don't get, you don't get spoiled. You know, there's no washing machine, so you have to do all your clothes in the bucket. You know, you can only iron your shirts and by hand. And uh, So you're and telling me people like Katie Price who had to clean their own clothes or were they laundered and sent out? If they're not going to sleep no, in the same... Oh, no, no. <laughs> really? You do have to clean your own stuff. Wow. You know, some of them bought things in for 33 days. I yeah. bought things in for a week and then just kept washing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but no, I mean, I'll tell you what, they're a bunch of dirty buggers, I'll tell you that. Really? Because, yeah, people said I, I put OCD because I was cleaning all the time. Yeah. Well, I had to. Because, I mean, people were chopping up, you know, raw oh, chicken on a work set. And no. When I went to wipe it, they went, oh, God, look at him, he's got OCD. I said, no, <laughs> you're all going to die. You know, but when I started telling them about their toilet activities, bloody hell, did they shut up? Because it was me that was cleaning the loo. <laughs> <laughs> How many toilets are there, by the way? Uh, there's three. Right. Because that yeah, can't be pleasant, the can it? One in the bar, uh, bedroom and then one in the bathroom across the way. Ugh. But uh, if I, I mean, I had my hands down the bloody toilets and everything. Do you know what I did, Alex? Go on. <laughs> For my little joke, I uh, took the hand towel out of the kitchen toilet. And uh, no one mentioned it. <laughs> Not one person said, where's the towel? I thought you'd dead. Oh. oh. Honestly, unbelievable. You know, really Where do you go from here, Keith? I'm, as you know, I'm a big fan of yours. You've got a huge talent and a massive personality. You deserve to be big. I mean, you can ride a wave of this for a while. What would you like to do with it? Where are you going to go next? Do you know what? I've never pre-planned anything in the whole of my career. I've never sort of had goals or ambitions, which sounds really odd for somebody in my position because people always go, oh, you know, you want to do this, you're really ambitious, you're really that. I mean, I've just ridden on a nice little way throughout my entire career and enjoyed it, and I still have. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> there's a nice little uh, bit now where people are talking about it, which is lovely, but who knows what's going to happen next. So uh, I'm just happy to go with it. It's been lovely talking to you. Thank you so much. I hope we can meet up soon because you're one of my favourite people and you're a big star. Hey. And congratulations on keeping the way you did during that show. I think it would have tested the patience of the most sane brain, let alone somebody surrounded by those fools. Congratulations. Oh, thanks ever so much. Thanks for your time, yeah. Keith Chagwin, thanks for coming on the show. Oh, Alex, take care.